Y... What's up? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another segment of Breakfast with Dr. Kojo. This is the breakfast show that we do every week on Mondays at 6 o'clock California time, 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, this is a great way uh, to get our week started off on the right foot. So uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about loneliness this morning. But before we get started, like we do every single show, I want you all to use the comment section down below to introduce yourself. Let me know where you're checking in from. A liminary name, and let's get into it. <laughs> Ava, what's up, what's up? Kendra, morning, morning. We're ready to go. Kristen May, what's going on? All right, so we got the OGs back. Rising Phoenix, good morning. What's up, what's up? Where's everybody checking in from? I hope we have a hope we had a fantastic weekend. Hope your football team won. If not, I hope you found something to be happy about this past uh, weekend. Unique Perez. Uh, Krista from Wisconsin, uh, Alana from South Florida, we got Julie from New York, Liz from South Carolina, Taylor from Kansas, Oklahoma. Okay, we got uh, Philly love in the house. Okay, congrats to y'all five and them. The Phillies won to Cleveland, New York City, New Jersey, Las Vegas, Georgia, Oklahoma, Gainesville, Georgia. Okay, awesome. So people are checking in from all over the uh, the country and Charlie's saying perfect topic for a lonely Canadian Thanksgiving so for all my people checking in from Canada I hope y'all had a happy Thanksgiving uh, I'm just not realizing that like for y'all in Canada it's it was Thanksgiving this past weekend it's not Thanksgiving for at least like what six weeks for us but um hope you had a good thanks uh Thanksgiving <laughs> ah three and two we won Brett I lost my voice last night Dr. Jonathan Harrell checking in from Philly. Okay, so a lot, a lot of Philly love. All right, let's go ahead and get started. But it was a good weekend for me. My football team won. Uh, and, the, yeah, Eagles won as well. So, you know, Eagles and Phillies won. So if you're from Philadelphia, I'm assuming you had a good sports weekend. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk about it. So overcoming loneliness. This is a very important topic, um, especially, uh, you know, with the weather getting a little bit, you know, with the um, – were they getting colder? Were they getting darker a little bit earlier? You know, we talk about things like seasonal depression and just having a low mood or just people isolating. It's very important to talk about what to do when you're all by yourself, right? And how to overcome loneliness because as, you know, we're in our house, right? You you can you can do Instacart, you can do DoorDash, you can you can press a couple of buttons and things can be brought to you. So a lot of times we may not go out and interact with people as much as we would like to. So it's important to talk about loneliness and that's what we're going to do. Laisha, I've been good. I've been good uh, uh, moving around, you know, preparing for this book launch, but I've been good. Maria, very sorry to hear this. Um, I'm so lonely when I'm alone or just not doing anything. How do I move on? So Maria, we're talking about loneliness this morning. Uh, Yours is this is a special case because you're dealing with grief uh, on top of like, you know, how traumatic COVID was and also the loneliness. So you have to be, you know, kind to yourself. Don't judge yourself for where you are. Uh, and then also the tips that I'm about to give on loneliness. Hopefully those things help. Um, but I'm very sorry to hear about the loss of your your father. You know, I know, I know the last the last two years have been uh, have been a lot, you know, and, and that's. That's probably just the the simple version, right? The last two years have been a lot. All right. So number one, um, all right. So hopefully this is helpful for you all. You know, uh, take up an old hobby, right? If you're struggling with loneliness, take up an old hobby. And um, uh, Kenneth says your voice sounds a little harsh. So you party too? I didn't party in New York at all. During the football game last night, I was screaming. I was like. I was just screaming for God to help us win, and then I lost my voice. Football, football makes me so emotional. But number one, take up an old hobby, right? If you're dealing with loneliness, hobbies are so important. And I'll take this a step further. If you have a hobby that you can do by yourself that does not require other people, I like that more, right? And this is important. Why is this important? Because sometimes we don't have people around us to get things done, right? You may not have your friends want to go to the lake with you. You may not have 
a group of people who want to do a road trip and, and drive three, four hours somewhere on the weekend with you. Sometimes we have that. Sometimes we don't. Right. And it sucks when we want to make a movie. We want to go somewhere and we want to be social with people, but we have nobody to do it with. Right. And sometimes it's easy to stay at home and to isolate yourself or, you know, resort to substances or, or whatever the case may be. Right. But when you have a hobby, especially an old hobby, you rediscover why you learned this thing. And it, for some people, it can really help to, you know, change how things are going for you. You know, real quick, uh, I'll talk about um, uh, Machine Gun Kelly. I don't know if you all are MGK fans, but I worked with um, um, MGK and his team on a, uh, on a Hulu thing to promote his documentary this, uh, this past um, summer. And when I watched it, I learned a lot about him. Like, I know that he was a rap artist and he went to rock and all these different things. But he talked about how he lost his father, you know, during the pandemic. Somebody here was talking about how they lost, you know, uh, their father, you know. So sorry to hear that. Um, and he was talking about how he was dealing with grief and self-sabotage and substance use and all these different things and isolating himself. And I like how in the documentary he said that he picked up his guitar. You know, he plays guitar from time to time. And that was an old hobby for him. And the that passion led to him making like a, uh, a rock album. And, you know, he went number one back to back. And I think he's the only artist with Bad Boy Records who's gone number one in over like a decade, right? So he was able to, you know, have two extremely successful albums. But it all started off with him being lonely and him not knowing what to do. And he's like, all right. I like to play guitar. I'm going to start playing guitar for my mental health because it makes me feel better, right? And that hobby turned into like, you know, of course, that became lucrative for him. And the goal for us is not to find a hobby that can make us a lot of money. The goal is to find a hobby that can help us feel a little less alone, right? So it doesn't have to become lucrative. But if we have something that we can do all by ourselves that makes us feel better, then, you know, I think that puts you in a really good position. Let me see what people are saying. I dislike MGK, but he's done well um, in a game for himself. Respect, respect. Because I wasn't even looking, like, I wasn't a fan of MGK's newer stuff. But when I watched his documentary, you know, I had to watch the documentary before I could work with him on that deal. Um, I learned a lot about him. It was very interesting to see what, um, just for me as a professional, it was interesting to see what people do for their mental health during the pandemic, you know, because we all kind of collectively suffered. So I was you know, interested in seeing like how he managed his mental health, what made him feel better on days when he wasn't feeling good and, you know, and how the guitar was involved and all that. What if I don't have a hobby? Well, Bradley Robinson, how about we go on Eventbrite? Go on Eventbrite, put in your city and look for anything, a painting class, uh, a reading class, a walking class, anything. If you don't have a hobby, well, then, you know, this is a time that we get to be creative. We get to do something, you know. We can try something. Um, uh, Nick says, can you do the thing? <laughs> uh, uh, <hey. laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Megan says, I'm in a bad headspace right now. I feel like I need someone, but I can't tell anyone I, I love how I'm truly feeling because it will hurt them too much. I can't tell anyone how I feel because it will. All right, so, so, so Megan, sometimes when, when people feel this way, Maybe you could tell people how you feel, but because of how you, you think they'll perceive it, you may not do that, right? Um, and the best thing you can do in this situation is make things as simple as possible, right? You know, whoever you can talk to to get something off your chest, you know, the most um, linear path you can take to getting some type of interaction with people is very helpful. Allergies in a Titans game. No, it's not, it's not allergies. It's really just a Titans game. Like, before the game... Ended like I was just screaming. After after the game ended, I got to sit down and gather myself. But I was we we nearly lost the game. I was very very like scared. I was scared. I was really scared. What if you don't have any hobbies and your ADHD prevents you from? The, oh, all right, so Len, let's talk about this one because I have ADHD as well, and I have a lot of hobbies. And I'm not saying that you having ADHD means that you don't have hobbies, but. If you have any hobbies right now, right, maybe by virtue of you having ADHD, you may be naturally curious with certain things, right? So if you have any hobbies or nothing that you're interested in, you've got to try different things, Lynn. So a lot of times when people don't have hobbies, I would like to say that we probably haven't been trying as many things as we'd like to do, right? 
And there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you're working, you're going through the motions. Sometimes we're too busy to try new things or, or get out and explore. But um, I would argue that if you tried, like if you took a cooking class, right? If you took a painting class, if you took an uh, an acting class, something would wake wake up within you, and it would it would create like a new path, and you could use that as something. And and you have to understand that with hobbies, the reason why they're so important is because look, we're always going to have some type of issue, whether it's not like a a mental health issue, it could be a issue with your family, it could be a financial issue, it could be an issue at work. Like that's life. We're gonna have issues as one way or another. Like things happen, bad things happen, good things good things happen. That's just how life is, right? When you have a hobby and something that you can do for fun, right? Purely fun, you're not worried about making money or whatever, it allows you to be present in the moment. You know, and I think I've talked about this before on a live stream, but when you're present in the moment, it's really hard to be anxious, right? Because anxiety, you have to live in the future. So if you're not operating in the future and you're operating in the right here and the right now and you're being present because you're doing a hob hobby, that could make you be less anxious, right? And also with depression, sometimes with depression, you live in the past a lot. Like you have a lot of regrets. So you're trying to like replay those days. You feel like your best moments are behind you, right? So once again, if you're doing something that you enjoy and you're in the moment and you're present, not that it's going to cure the depression and anxiety, but it can put you in a better position to utilize the tools that you have, whether it's medications like antidepressants or like family members and friends and having a support system. So it's important to stay present as possible. And that's going to be my, my second point. But let me click what, and see what I'm um, uh, saying. YouTube can teach you anything. That's how. So this is a good way to do the first love of the show right here. This is a good comment to do it on right here. And I, I think YouTube is awesome, or the internet is awesome, because I have been in situations where, like, a week a week or two ago, my garage door wasn't working, and I had to figure out, how do I close my garage door manually? And I didn't know how to do this, and I was stressing out. I went to YouTube, and I watched a five-minute video, and the guy taught me how to do it. And he earned a new subscriber, right? And not that I'm going to have a new hobby. Like, I'm not going to sit here and try and pick my garage door and learn how to do it up and down. Like, I want no parts of doing that. But now I know how to do something different. So if a friend's garage door gets stuck, I'm like, hey, I know how to do this. And I never knew how to fix garage doors before, right? So I went on YouTube and, of course, I needed it. But I learned how to do something else, you know, and that, that kind of boosted my confidence, um, ADHD here. I try many things and enjoy the newness. Boost my mood tremendously. So, Julia, thank you for weighing in. And so, for the person who said they have ADHD and it doesn't allow them to do anything, you know, I, I, I want them to kind of reframe your thoughts because if you have ADHD, the things that you're good at, you enjoy doing those things naturally, right? But you don't know until you try things. So, you have to try different. You have to go, go out there and try different things. And put yourself in a position to like try them you know if like i would argue that if you don't have enough hobbies you haven't been putting yourself out there and this may be because you might be depressed you might have low mood you may be isolating yourself right but if we can try a couple of things here and there we may learn more and more things about ourselves you know all right let me um adhd prevents me from not picking up new hobbies oh so I, I'm look ADHD can come in many different flavors. So this could be true. Like somebody said this earlier, this could be true. All right, um, let me see. My family does crafting. My mom taught me sewing and crochet. Something she learned from my grandma and hers. It's nice to do an audiobook or music, and makes me feel more connected to the family I can't be with. So Amber, I like this as well. I use technology uh, a lot to be connected with my family that's on the East Coast. So I like this a lot. Um, and let me, my hobby. <laughs> Mary, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. How do we find time for our hobbies if we have no support help? I have three little ones and run a house on my own, so there's no time. I'm filling everyone's cup of my own. All right, so let me talk about this before I move on to the next one. The older you get, something weird happens, uh, Heather. You're going to have to schedule. You're going to have to schedule things 
in your schedule that you used to be able to do on your own, right? So, like, literally, I've talked to couples where I'm like, hey, you have to sit down and take a, a pen and a paper and schedule time for sex, right? Like, literally, I've told people that before. And it sounds weird because, like, if sometimes the the less spontaneous sex feel, sex is, it feels like a chore or it doesn't feel like authentic, right? But you're you're busy, they're busy, you have to schedule it. You may have to schedule time for a movie night. It sounds ridiculous, but you're moving so fast. You you really will not be able to have a movie night unless you schedule it. You know, you might have to schedule time to meditate or like go outside and, and, and talk to a friend for 20 minutes on the phone. And it sounds ridiculous, but like, I really do believe you. When people come out here and say that, oh, I have three kids, I run a house in my home and there's no time. I actually, I believe you. Like, I'm not going to say that, oh, you have time. No, the way you've constructed your life, you really don't have any time. So, like, that's actually valid. Now we have to reframe things and see where we can schedule some time in for for, for ourselves, right? Especially for people who have kids. Because you, you probably don't look at your life as being your own. You look at, oh, the kids need this, the kids need that, the kids need that. But you have to make sure that you're in a position to do for the kids. And that means that you have to do things that you enjoy, whether it's like finding a, a babysitter or having your mom help or having your spouse help. Even if you can take like an hour and a half to go be with your, your girlfriends or just catch up, that goes a long way into making you feel like a human again and allowing you to start like enjoying things. Um, let me see. So Hector, we've... We, we've talked about this before, but um, I will have another uh, live where we talk about this, especially with the, the news coming from the White House with the, um, the president. I think they're trying to decriminalize marijuana and um, they're trying to look at the reclassification of marijuana as a schedule one substance. Um, so as we get more information, it'll give us a chance to, to talk about this again. I don't think that I, I never thought marijuana should be a schedule one substance. Right. You know, uh, but I do think that there's risks involved and people should be aware of it. But I don't think, you know, like the vice president said, I don't think people should go to jail for using marijuana. Like, I, I've never thought that, you know, I, I don't think that that warrants you going to jail. You know, it doesn't make you a bad person. All right. Number two. Um, all right. Well, actually, let me talk about the single dads real quick. So, yeah, Ali, same thing for the single dads. So single parents in general is very difficult when you have little ones that you are responsible for because you don't think about yourself first, you know. But any little time that you have, like for a single dad, if you get Sundays to go watch the game, you know, assuming I was a single dad, right, and I got to watch football on Sundays, like that would go a long way into boosting, like, my mental health. All right, and... um. It, it, yeah, yeah, Nick Biden wants to release all those convicted of minor um, charges. I, I like that move. I don't I don't want to get political here on this live stream, but I like that move. I don't think anybody should be incarcerated for using marijuana. I think it should be decriminalized. You should let people know this is what can happen if you choose to use it. And based off your family history, you have to be aware of psychosis, boom, 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 all these different things. But you should not go to jail for it. You know, not at all. Not at all. And uh, Ali, thank you for making that point. All right. All right. And uh, and Kendra, Kendra doubles that down. Single dads absolutely do struggle just as much as single moms. I completely agree. All right. And writing down a gratitude list is the second thing to do when you feel lonely, right? And this is very important because this is one of the fastest ways to bring you back to the present. You know, we were talking earlier about overcoming anxiety and trying to, like, push off depression, right? If the more present you can stay, the better, you know, if you're sitting here right now and you're watching this live and you're feeling lonely, if you feel lonely, it's going to affect your mood, right? So if right now you feel lonely and I ask you a question, you're going to approach it from a negative perspective, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, all things considered, you know, like, eh. like, like you're going to have that type of mood, right? But if you write down everything that you're grateful for, at least for the three minutes that you're writing it down, it's going to be very hard to feel lonely. You'll still be by yourself, but you're going to feel like, oh, wow, 
I actually see the support that I have. You start writing down where well, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful for um, the people around me. I'm grateful for opportunity. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for health. I'm grateful for my medications. I'm grateful for whatever it is, right? But when you write that down and you have it listed, you get to see all the things that you have. And a beautiful thing happens. You get to be a bit more present and that allows you to feel a little less alone. You might still be by yourself, you know, but it's going to help you reframe things, you know. And when you go to therapy, you know, we do something called cognitive reframing uh, or, or we try to do that to where we want to get you to see things a bit differently. So if you come in with a negative mindset and the world is effed and everything is screwed over time, we'd like to kind of reframe how you think to where you're like, OK, well, I guess everything is not that bad or there are some opportunities for me to get a little bit better along the way right and just the way you think you know like reframing that can change like it can change a lot it can change a lot you know when people go therapy that's what they get i feel this myself <laughs> look uh tired of day oh that football game took a lot out of me it took a lot out of me it really did i was <laughs> I go a little bit too hard with football. But um, Cheyenne, I, I completely uh, agree. You got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. I stay too busy to be lonely. Well, well, we, like Patty said, like she was telling me, we, we got to take care of ourselves. Um, I tell my children it's time uh, for us to count our blessings, including things about ourselves and not just the material things. I like that as well because I think w when you think about what do I have, we naturally think of like, oh, I got a PlayStation, I got a car, but sometimes just having, you know, like for me, whenever I get hurt, you know, like I, I think, you know, like I rolled my ankle a couple months ago, I, uh, you know, I hurt one of my fingers at the gym. Whenever I get hurt, I think about the fact that, dang, like just, you know, five minutes ago, my ankle wasn't hurt and now it's hurt. And all I can think about is the fact that my ankle's hurting, right? But if you have a, your body and you're, you're happy and you're healthy, and you're able to move around like that's a blessing right there that's a blessing right there uh right now they're saying so ali hear me out you can say what you're grateful for but the reason why i like to take it a step further and actually write it down is because when i write it down it's actually that like i've written it down like i'm grateful for my mother i'm grateful for my father i'm grateful like i actually wrote it down or i put it in my phone so i can see it and I feel like it hits a, in my opinion, I feel like it hits a little bit different when you write it down, right? Because when you say it, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm grateful for this. But writing it down, like, it hits a bit different, you know, in my opinion. Uh, God woke me up this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric says, I feel like sports or sporting events help me. So, Eric, let me give you a love of the show, and let me tell you why, okay? <laughs> So sporting events are so helpful, and I think people need to realize that, um, you know, during the pandemic, I learned that a lot of people were essential. Of course, like we knew that uh, doctors and nurses and teachers and people who worked in the food service industry were essential, but people who are entertainers and athletes and actors and singers and dancers, we need those people. You know, like when the, the pandemic was here and we could no longer watch sports. We could no longer go to concerts. People's mental health was collectively, so, like, people were kind of declining because you didn't have that outlet, right? And, you know, thinking back to yesterday, like, yes, I, you know, I watched my TV, my, my, my uh, team on TV, and, like, I'm screaming, and I lose my voice, and I'm, I'm so, like, it takes a lot of energy out of me. But I realized that for myself. When I watch games on Sunday, that's the one place where I get to express myself. I get to be upset. I get to laugh. I get to jump. I get to scream. I get to hop on the couch, you know. And without that outlet, you know, you, you don't get to just have fun, right? It's important to have fun. So, Eric, I, I completely agree. I think if sports is how you, like, release yourself, which is kind of like how I express myself is is definitely important it's very important and it's not something that it's a non-negotiable it, it's just as priority as well not as priority as paying your bills but it, it's pretty important it's it's pretty important people yeah pe people need an escape like i said 
there's no moment in your life where you're going to be able to look up and say, I have no problems. Like right now, we have we all have problems that we need to address, things that we're probably procrastinating, things that, you know, we should have done last week. We're always going to have problems that will never not be true. So we do need an escape, right? Cassie said, I'm an actress. Oh, Cassie, that's fantastic. You know, I, and, and acting is a great way to, you know, express different parts of yourself. And uh, I got ADHD and I recently moved to a new city where I don't know anybody. So uh, what city did you move to? Put the city in the, um, in the chat and let's see if we can find people who live uh, in your area. Hopefully you can make some new friends. So Vaughn, Vaughn from the East. Uh, drop your city in the chat, and if you live, if you live in the city or in the state where Vaughn lives, you know maybe add add, uh, add Vaughn. Y'all can be friends. You know, it's, it's all about connecting with people. It's all about connecting with people. So the third thing you can do to help out with loneliness, right? And and uh, I'll see if the um the moderators can like put all the three things together. But it's important for me to um mentioned that all these three things, right? These are three things that you can do to help yourself feel a little less lonely. All of these three things do not involve anybody else, right? And obviously, I think uh, a quick prescription to fix loneliness is for me to prescribe people to be around you, right? And if I'm, if I'm like, all right, go be around people, yes, you'll feel less lonely, you know, obviously. But I'm talking about for the person who is watching this right now, you feel like you don't have any friends, you don't know who you're going to reach out to. These are three things you can do to help yourself out. It doesn't involve anybody else. And I would like you to be a bit more social, but this is a good starting point, right? So the third one is practice self-care, even the small things. So I can't even smell even this morning, but self-care is important. On a day where, all right, let me give you all a makeup scenario. Let's say you're, you've been in the house. You haven't really, you know, showered all day or maybe in a couple of days you're isolating yourself. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You don't know who to hang out with. You feel lonely. A good thing for you to do, right, is to, you know, if you can, to take a shower, brush your teeth, prepare like you're going somewhere, you know, or pretend like you have a day coming over and, and you have to, like, get the house clean. You know, do what you can. Clean what you can clean. You know, put on, like, a new outfit. Like, take a shower. And then when, when, you, when you see that you've done your self-care, you brush your teeth, you know, Good morning, Emily, and good morning, everybody who is uh, just getting to the chat. You feel like you've done all these things, right? Now, you're ready to start your day, right? And you might still be in the house, but I promise you, you're going to carry yourself differently if you brush your teeth, if you've taken a shower, if you put on some cologne, you smell good. You might not be going anywhere, but now you just feel a bit better about yourself, you know? And that's helpful because once you've done that, you may have the energy to leave the house and to go to the grocery store, or to go to the dog park, or, or to, to interact with people, you know? And um, LaVette says, it really helps to get up a purpose. LaVette, this is this is very helpful. And, you know, I posted a video about ADHD paralysis uh, a couple of weeks ago, and people were saying, how do you beat ADHD paralysis? And sometimes it's not, it's not as simple, because it's not simple, but sometimes I really, like, I might be sitting down on the couch, right? Yeah, I, I might have, like, Four things to do, but um, you know, maybe I'm I'm stuck or I'm frozen. Sometimes you feel like you're in the couch and you, you can't get up, right? And when I feel that way, I just I get up and I, I just stand up. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just stand up. I just stand up, hang around, stand up, you know. Like I stand up on purpose, you know, and I say, All right, Kojo, get up, get up. It's time to get the trash out, it's time to you know, uh, sweep the kitchen. It's time to mop the floors. Do anything. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm going to do. I got to do something, just anything. I, I cannot be sitting down, you know? And that's been very helpful for me, you know? Water break. Actually, it is time for water break. Can somebody drop the, um, the magic word in the chat? And yeah, I'm going to leave this up while I go read some more comments. These are the three tips to help you when you start to feel lonely. Take up an old hobby, write down a gratitude list, and practice self-care. Let me see what people are saying. Um, I've been practicing not isolating and being social, but it started to give me anxiety or something like, oh. All right, so Taylor, look, if you've been doing this, you got to give yourself some credit. So if you've been practicing going out and being social, it takes a lot of energy to be social, whether you're hosting people at your house or whether you're going out to meet people. It takes a lot of energy. So if you've been a little social, you got to give yourself 
a little bit of credit. You gotta give yourself a love of the show. So I'm gonna give you a love of the show in anticipation that you'll give yourself some more credit. If that makes sense. Cheers. Perfect. Gives us a chance to get some water in. Oh man, and that game took so much out of me yesterday, but we won, so this is worth it. I took the best nap of my life after the game. I was like, oh, I can sleep now. I feel so much better. All right. And um, if you really want to get the results for gratitudes, right, I am profoundly grateful. Then let's send things after each one. Thank you three times with a brief. Oh, wow. Wow. Hmm. I'm give Ali love the show for this. So if you really want to get results with your gratitude list, right? I am profoundly grateful. So Ali, I like this. I'm gonna start doing this now because normally, like, I will write. Uh, I made a gratitude list the other day, but I never made it that in depth to where I said I am profoundly grateful for. But I did make a gratitude list the other day. Um, I'm not sure where I was going through that day, where I'm not sure where my mind was at, but I felt like I needed to write one down. Um. And I'll share my gratitude list with you all real quick before we end um, the show. Yeah, because we are about 30 minutes. But let me share my gratitude list. This is from October 5th. So that's what, like, I think a couple of days ago. All right, so my gratitude list from that day was um, uh, today I'm grateful for my family and loved ones. Uh, today I'm grateful for my dog. <laughs> Today, I'm grateful for the guys that I work out with every morning. Today, I'm grateful for the house I live in and being able to afford rent. Uh, today, I'm grateful for my online community. Uh, today, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm alive. So I put all those things in there. And, um, you know, like, I mean, I, I type this out on my phone. But like, actually typing it out allowed me to be like, okay, wow, like, I'm grateful for these things. And I'm grateful to be here. Because uh, sometimes you forget, you know, so it's very, very helpful to, you know, to just write that out. I've had my diagnosis since college, but I didn't know ADHD process was a thing until I saw your video on it. It makes so much sense now. Oh, Chris, I, I just saw, saw this comment, but uh, I'm happy that you all are starting to, like, you know, get these videos. And I'm I'm hoping that these tips are helpful for you all. Uh, yeah, it says uh, a successful six-figure business coach gave me this. Ali, I like that. I like that. I'm going to do my best to. And that, that part in the profoundly grateful because words matter. Like words are important. And Taylor says, I needed that. I will give myself grace and be patient with myself. I'm proud of myself for trying and forming healthy habits and patterns. That's a, du that's a double love of the show right there. <laughs> that's a double love of the show. And Roseanne says, do you drink? Roseanne, no. So, I, so <laughs> real quick, I, I'm going to end it on Taylor's comment, but, um, I don't drink caffeine. I wish I, I wish I could drink caffeine because maybe it would wake me up more in the morning sometimes. But uh, caffeine gives me the bubble guts, you know. So I'm going to be on somebody's toilet for a little bit too long uh, if I drink you know, the same Starbucks, like, latte that y'all drink in the morning. But uh, caffeine gives me bubble guts. But I wish I could drink caffeine like it would get me up. And, you know, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you know, maybe if, if it worked for me, I'm sure I would have used it maybe – you know, abuse it in sense of overusing it um, to help me focus. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a big caffeine. I'm not a get big caffeine person. Um, but uh, going back to what Taylor said, yeah. So Taylor, like you said in here, you said you're gonna give yourself grace and be patient with yourself. You're proud of yourself for trying and forming healthy habits and patterns, right? So. The next time, Taylor, that you come on a live, whether it's tomorrow's live stream or a gaming live stream or next week's show, just understand that you're doing the best that you can, right? And whenever you feel frustrated, come back to this comment, come back to this live and just let it be a reminder. And even as I go on throughout my day, I'm going to allow myself to, you know, to be human. You, you, you make mistakes. You may isolate before you, you know, you even realize it, but Every day we get a chance and we get a brand new opportunity to, to do the day over and to be our best selves, right? So I hope we have a fantastic uh, uh, day today. Like Amy says, always celebrate your wins. 
be proud of you. Clap for yourself. Teach your yeah, that's that's why you see me clapping. So I hope you all have a fantastic morning. This has been a great show. Uh, it's been awesome uh, connecting with you all. Like Kendra says here, if you're new to the live stream, if it's your first live, then this is, you know, uh, hopefully um, the first of many times that you'll be on this live stream. But you're officially part of the community, and I do appreciate you. And Mira Penn. Ah, Kelly, I, 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 saw, I saw this comment. And I had to click it. I might try that. Like, I really might try that. <laughs> uh, Amanda, it was her first live as well. Awesome. J uh, Jay, Jay, I appreciate y'all. All right, so I'm signing off, y'all. Have a fantastic day. And uh, go Titans. <laughs>